Hi, I'm Sara Lobinga and Gomez, a third year student taking a Bachelor of Secondary Education under the College of Education. And the second lesson that I will be discussing is all about portfolios. This is taken from Chapter 3 of the materials that Dr. Craig Refoyo provided to us. So let's keep the ball rolling. Portfolios were popular in the 1990s that concerns about reliability and the growing importance of large-scale accountability tasks. In the 21st century, with the advent of new technology, we venture from traditional paper and folder type of portfolio to the digital ones that makes it more exciting and engaging because of its digital possibilities and it increases scrutiny on basing teacher evaluation on students' academic progress. These are the objectives for today's lesson. At the end of the lesson, the students will be able to first understand the concept of portfolio, second, discuss the two types or examples of portfolio, and third is organize a portfolio of his or her own. Now, what is a portfolio? It is a purposeful collection of work that demonstrates a student's efforts, progress, and achievements over time. It includes um, work samples and students' reflections on the work. It is not a random collection of work because contents are tied to major objectives and students' own selection. It could be a collection of academic assignments, projects, revisions, and work samples that stretch over a designated period of time, belonging to one student. It may also contain student self-assessment and reflections on his or her own work. Portfolios could either be in a digital form or a folder form, the traditional one. As you can see on the lower picture, the right side facing your screen, it is labeled by topics. Um, portfolio are usually like that so that the teacher can easily check it. It doesn't need to be glittered or artsy. As long as your portfolio is presentable, then that's okay. But if you wish to do so, you may. It can also be sometimes based on the instructions of a teacher, your teacher, because there are teachers who want their students' portfolio to be straight to the point, and there are also who wants it to be artistic. Now, how a portfolio is developed. First is we have the standard EKS, or essential knowledge and skills, that is what students should know or be able to do. That is your objectives. Then we have the design at performance task that allows students to show what they know. Next is what does good performance tests look like? And in that, you have to set the criteria. And in setting the criteria, in evaluating their work, students' work, you have to use a rubric, uh, a scoring guide, so that you can assess students' performance. Now, the rubrics can either be holistic or analytic as we previously learned and it depends on the teacher because he or she will weigh it to the topic learning objectives and the capabilities and capacities of his or her students now here's an example for a math class um the objectives for it is at the end of the lesson the students will be able to construct con concrete models of equivalent fractions and the task will be student draw, draws a sketch to show why 3 6 is equal to 2 4. Student explains his or her thinking about the sketch in writing. And the criteria will be the student sketch must show that the shaded areas of 3 6 and 2 4 are the same size. Writing shows a clear understanding. So that is the criteria. And for the assessment, that is, rubric helps teacher and students objectively evaluate work on a scale of 1 for novice and 4 for distinguished. The assessment ev method or evaluation will be depending on the criteria set by the teachers in the first place. Another example for an English class. At the end of the lesson, the students will be able to use good descriptive detail when writing so that your reader understands what you are saying. So the task is students will take telling sentences and expand them into a showing paragraph with rich descriptive detail. The criteria is the writing will contain vivid, specific, descriptive language that paints a mind picture 
for the reader and the assessment method or evaluation the rubrics again will help the teacher and students objectively evaluate work on a scale of one novice novice is like a lower level not an expert and to four distinguish an expert remember that all the outputs of the students graded output will be compiled inside a portfolio, whether it is a digital one or the traditional folder portfolio. Now, these are the characteristics of a portfolio. An effective portfolio is purposeful. It is systematic and well-organized. It contains meaningful work. It has pre-established guidelines. It engages students in selection, evaluation, and reflection. It motivates students. And last it is it documents progress based on clear, well-specified scoring criteria. Now let's proceed with the advantages and disadvantages of having a portfolio. First, we, we will tackle about the advantages. It, it combines the strength of performance assessment with a continuous record of achievement. It engages students in self-evaluation and reflection. It leads to goal setting. It encourages and supports critical thinking. It involves students in collaborative assessment. It integrates assessment with learning. It focuses on self-improvement. And the last is it enhances student motivation. Because portfolio are a compilation of graded works of your students, you can easily track their strengths and weaknesses in a subject and address it. This may also promote self-assessment that is and essential factors for learning, growth, and development of the students in a way that students will see their grades for examinations or outputs and they know what area they should improve. Now the disadvantages. Scoring is time-consuming and not consistent because criteria are too general and raters are untrained. It also needs time and resources to design, to review and score, and to get, to get training. Sometimes the grading uh, of a portfolio can be biased, especially if the teacher will just look into the artistic side of it. Like for example, oh, your portfolio is so nice. It has so many design, 100, without even looking at the content. And yes, it can be time consuming because imagine a teacher usually handles 30 to 40 students each subject. Every student of the class is required to have one. So imagine one subject, teacher versus the 30 to 40 portfolio of the students. That's why grading should be done by a skilled and trained teacher, not just by anyone. Here, the examples of portfolio, it is actually divided into documentation and growth. However, the documentation can also be subdivided into three, such as documentation when it comes to celebration, that it shows students' best work. For example, highest scored tests, highest grade paper, best and best project. Second is documentation in competence. Shows level of achievement which in relation to learning targets, such as mastery of each competency needed to do electrical work, for example. Next is documentation in project. Illustrates competence on completion of a single task, such as history, unit final presentation, or a group or small project on identifying chemicals in a water sample. And now we have the growth. It shows improvement of student competence over time. An example of it is writing that shows differences in skill or drawings from the first part of the semester to the last week of the semester. Presented on your screens are the examples of a documentation like a book portfolio, or just basically containing the outputs of your students. The next slide is the growth. Um, while the growth may be like this, presented on your screen, the pictures, the developmental process of your students throughout the years, it can either be towards his or her achievements, behavior in class, and so on. These are my references for today's report and I think this will also be the end of this lesson, so stay tuned for the next and last video. God bless and stay safe, everyone.